place like home. Oh, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Oh, there's no place Willie. like home. Willie! Willie! Don't call me Willie. I'll call you anything I like. And you get out of that bathtub. You've been an hour. Ah, good jump in the lake. If you don't get out of there this minute, I'll tell Ma. There's no place like home. Ma? Ma? What is it, Edna? Willie won't get out of the bathtub, and I want to take my bath. I've got a date tonight. Well, I'm sure if you tell him that, dear, he'll hurry. I'll answer it. Hello? Yes? Uh-huh, this is Peaches. You get away from here, you goggle-eyed, dizzy goof, and let me alone. Don't you dare talk to me like that, Willie Wallace, or I'll... I'll slap you. You and who else? And you get out of that tub this minute. There's no place like... Mother! What is it, dear? Will you please order that little brat out of the bathtub? Don't speak that way of your brother, Mary. Well, he is. He's a selfish, inconsiderate, uncouth animal. Will you please shut up? Oh, oh, I didn't mean you, Al. Other people in this family are entitled to consideration. I have a guest coming tonight, and I want to be dressed early. Oh, for Pete's sake, stop broadcasting. Oh, oh no, Al, not you. I don't see why Father doesn't have another bath built in this house. It's archaic. It's uncivilized to expect a family of this size to be dependent on one bathtub. Well, you had all afternoon to take your bath, didn't you? That doesn't concern you. Oh, it doesn't. What am I supposed to do? Go home from the football game and use the garden hose? George! George, that's unfair. It was my turn. Hey, Mom! Mom! What is it, Willie? Did the laundry come home? Yes, your things are on your dresser. You'd better change to your long drawers. Aw, oh, gee, Mom, no guy over 10 years old wears long drawers. Will you stop talking about long drawers? Oh, no, Al, not you. Willie, you're not over your cold yet. You do, I say. Oh, listen. All right, I'll come right over. Goodbye. Oh, so you finally got out of the bathtub. Well, now maybe I can take a bath. Quiet, insect. If you used up all the hot water, I'll get even with you, Willie. Don't call me Willie, you gaga. I hope it's so cold it gives you goose pimples. Hey, Mom, I don't want to wear long drawers. Who's in there? Get away from here and quit annoying me. Oh, George, you mean thing? I got a date. Go on, chase yourself. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight and every night, Monday through Friday, your radio reporter brings you the latest worldwide news of the day. Oh, George, do your rehearsing someplace else. And a good, good evening, friends. This is your Hollywood super snooper, fresh in the fertile fields of flickers with a few fleeting flashes of famous faces. Mary? What have you got in there? Goldfish? Well, that's about the only thing that could get a bath in this house on Saturday. Say! There's nothing in there. What are you looking for? Hey! Have you gone cuckoo? Oh, Edna, you startled me. I was taking a flight. A what? An occult flight. Projecting my astral ego into the subliminal. <laughs> I just as soon have a fellow hold my hand. <clears throat> I wouldn't expect you to understand. It's beyond your earthbound conception. You are intellectually embalmed. Well, I haven't had any complaints yet. Say, Mary, I think I'll wear this little crepe dress of yours tonight. Well, you've got another thing coming. I'll lend you nothing after what you did to my sport coat. Oh, well, keep your old dress. And I hope you break your fishbowl. Neighbors, this is the town radio crier bringing you a few drippings from the old town pump. George, will you get out of there? Go away, you insect. I'm going to tell Ma you call me that, you pal parrot. 
Ma? Ma? Guys, you think I was a baby asking me to wear a long drawer? Ma? You want the fellas to think I'm a buttercup? Shut up, Willie. Don't call me Willie. Ma, George is still in the bathroom. Yeah, why don't you make George change his? Gosh, I'm old enough to... Ma, if I don't get in the bathroom, I'll never be ready. Hey, Pop, did you have to wear long drawers when you were 17? Oh, will you please make George get out of the bathroom? Good gosh, wait a minute, children. Can't a man come home after a hard day's work without listening to a lot of complaints? Papa, George is just staying in there to be mean. Yeah, Mom doesn't understand how a fellow feels about things like that, Pop. Hello, Ed. Hello, Mother. What kept you so late? Well, a man brought in an order for some handbills, and I had to see that the boys got it out before I left the plant. Now I gotta hurry or I'll be late for lunch. <laughs> well, you can't get in the bathroom because George is in there. I gotta get in there. Oh, Father, we simply have to have another bathroom in this house. What for? Two people can't take a bath at the same time. I'll get you some supper. All right. Oh, Mother, I want the parlor to myself this evening. Company coming. Mr. Nordingham is spending the evening with me. I don't believe I remember you mentioning him before, Mary. I just met him. He's a scientist and very intellectual. Well, I'll try and get everything all tidied up before I go over to Mrs. Fletcher's. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old Melody Man, bringing you the latest lilts of syncopation. If you don't stop annoying me, you lop-eared baboon, I'll... What? Gosh, Father, I didn't know that was you. Did you get a job today? Well, I'll tell you about that. Did you look in the want ads? Well, there's nothing there, Father, suitable to my talents. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. When I was your age, I was five years working and making $22 a week. Oh, Father. What kind of a job are you looking for? Calling out stations on a steamship. Oh, Mom! is here, Edna. You take off my dress. Now, Mary, don't you touch me or, or I'll stay home all night and sit in the park with you and your fellow. Well, all right, but you just wait till you get home. Hi, Cupid. Hello, Willie. Hey, you call me that again, I'll bust you right on the schnozzle. Hello, Al. Hello, Peaches. Peaches? Lemons. Where are we going? I got my dad's car and I thought maybe we'd go for a little ride and then take in a picture. Great. Wait till I get my clothes on. You're not going. Oh, yeah? What do you want me to do? Sit home all night? Not when Al's buying tickets to a show. That right, Al? Well, I guess it's all right by me, Willie. Didn't I tell you not to call... Yeah, sure, Al, old boy. I don't see why you can't go out by yourself. What would? Fifteen cents? Willie. You go right upstairs and get dressed. Oh, it's only Al, Mom. Oh, Al, meet my mother. Mom, this is Al Phillips. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Wallace. How do you do, Al? Where are you and Edna going? Oh, we're going to a show. Oh, well, that'll be all right. But I don't want you riding around the highways. There are too many bad accidents at night. Oh, Al's a wonderful driver, Ma. He knows all about cars. He's an inventor. He's a what? He's a soda jerker at the Pink Pig. Well, that's only my spare time work, and Benning's my real trade. <laughs> Willie's going with us, Ma, so everything will be all right. Sure, we wouldn't think of going any place without good old Bill. Well, go put your clothes on, man. You can't go out like that. Okay, but don't you two try and run out on me, because if you do, I'll tell something I know about one time when I was... Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Pop. Willie, can't you see where you're going? Just... Just Ed, what happened? Nothing. I was just resting. Oh. Here, see if you can blame things fashion, will you, Mother? You've got to come out now and have something to eat. I haven't time. I'll be late for lodge. Well, but you know, Lodge, you've got to have your supper. But this is the wheels, the new lodge. It's important. I'm the door tender. That sounds important. Though it's kind of funny they don't let you into the meetings with the others. Well, new member, give me time. Mm, well, even the doorkeeper's got to eat. Oh, if you want to eat.
Ladies and gentlemen, this program has come to you through the courtesy of the Barney Spinach Wafer Company. Hey, George, have a heart. Be sure to serve your little ones nothing but the genuine, unadulterated, delicious bologna. bologna. No, you nitwit. Thanks. Listen, George, you're going cuckoo doing all this radio rooster stuff. And besides, you're going to get dandruff on your tonsils using that hairbrush for a microphone. That's too much. I won't take that, even from a brother. All right, now, George, I mean, can't you take a joke? No, I can't. Hey, look, your radio's falling over. You big scary! Have a good time, but come home early. I will. Good night, Mrs. Good Walton. night. If you start anything, I'll tell on you, because I didn't even touch you. Hey, Mom. What is it now, Willie? Oh, nothing. Where's Edna now? I guess they're waiting for you outside. Outside? Goodbye. Hey! Hey! All right, you couple of cheapskates. I'll get in with you for that. I'll answer it, Mother. It's probably Mr. Nordingham. Yeah, and a company lady. Two dollars. It was due three days ago, and I've got to get it this time. I beg your pardon. I said... I heard you. Please remember your position. I shall obtain the paltry sum from my father. Wait. Yes, sir, Mother. This is going to be a big night at the Whales. The Grand Harpoon is coming on from Chicago. Oh, that reminds me, Ed. Father's coming on from Kansas City for a visit. Well, I guess that'll be all right with me, too. Mother, the piano man is here for his money. Oh, Ed, your pay envelope. Oh, gosh, I nearly forgot it. You give it to him, will you, Mary? I've got to help your father get started. Yeah, I've got to get going. Ed? Hmm? This is two dollars short. It is? Mm-hmm. It must have been taken out for some reason. I'll think of it later. I gotta hurry now. I beg your pardon. Is this the Wallace residence? Yeah. Thank you. I'm Mr. Nordingham. It's all right with me. And I suppose you're a little Willie? Listen, Mug, one more crack like that out of you and I'll pop your eye on the chin. Willie! Good evening, Miss Mary. Oh, good evening, Mr. Nordingham. Won't you come in? Thank you. How dare you speak like that to Mr. Nordingham? Well, no buttercup like him can cutie me and go to woo. You... you little ruffian! <laughs> it's so delightful of you to ask me here. Shall we go into the drawing room? Thank you. How do I know? Well, Ed Wallace, you're just about the best looking man in town when you get one of your uniforms on. Uh, well, it does give something to a man. Yes, it does. Where's my lodge hat? Right here. The, oh, mother, the feather goes in the back. Well, it looks just as good in the front as it does in the back, if you ask me. I'm sorry I won't be able to drive you over to Mrs. Fletcher's. Oh, don't you worry about that. I won't be gone long. I want to be here when Grandpa comes. You have such a sweet little home. And so spiritually harmonious. Oh, do you think so? Oh, yes, and my psychic sense responds to the vibration of blue. It does? Yes, and that signifies a sympathetic surrounding. Peaceful, ineffable serenity and refinement. Mother, how will he bring in the garbage can? What do you want for Sunday dinner? Anything's all right with me. Ed? Mary, do you think that three pounds of corned beef will... Oh, excuse me. Mother dear, I want you to meet Mr. Nordingham. How do you do? How do you do? I'm honored. Your lovely daughter has told me so much about you. <laughs> Please don't move. I can sense it. Oh, it's beautiful. I glimpsed it. I glimpsed it briefly. You glimpsed what? Your aura. You have the most beautiful pink aura, Mrs. Wallace. <clears throat> Mary, may I speak to you for a minute?
What was he talking about? Shh. Mother, he'll hear you. He complimented you when he said you had a pink aura. Mine's only gray. What are you talking about? Your aura. It's something that hangs about, something you don't see when it's there. Mary, if you're trying to tell me my petticoat show, say so right out. No, Mother. Your aura is the radiant spirit protoplasm that embraces you. What kind of crazy... <laughs> Mother, please. Oh, well, I suppose you're old enough to take care of yourself. Anyway, I've got to go. You be sure and look out for Grandpa when he comes. Another barrel of whale oil. Sperm. Oil. Alaska. All good whales prosper. Ed, I want you to meet Mr. Franklin Q. Whitney, our national grand harpoon from Chicago. This is Ed Wallace, grand harpoon. He's a good fella. We're breaking him into the lodge. A friend of Joe Dorgan's is a friend of mine. I'm pleased to meet you, grand harpoon. You'll excuse me, Brother Wallace. I'd like a confidential word with Joe. Sure. I've got great news for you. Yeah. The President wires me he's going to let you have another $5,000 worth of stock. Gosh, Grand Harpoon. Sure wish I could take it. But you see, I had to give a note to the bank for the first $5,000 I bought. That's most unfortunate. Yeah. How about your friend Wallace here? He looks like a live wire. Oh, Ed's a good man. Two more barrels of whale oil. Brother Wallace, your friend Dorgan has recommended you very highly. Now, I have a little proposition I'm letting some of the boys in on. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Grand Harpoon. Don't mention it. How would you like to invest in a valuable gold mine? Well, I don't know. That's kind of out of my line. Is Joe in on it? You bet I am. It's a sure thing. Uh, we'll take it up after the meeting. Two more barrels of whale oil. Do you see anything, Mr. Nottingham? Something is forming. It must be very quiet. We must wait for the proper vibrations. Oh, this is Mr. Nottingham. How do you do, sir? Fit it, young fellow. Oh, Grandfather. Mr. Nottingham is a famous occultist. Oh, I wonder if you'd mind looking over these specs. Not an oculus, Grandfather. Just a... Uh, a seer of divine things. Oh, excuse me, my mistake. Uh, where's your ma? Well, she and Willie have gone out, but George is home. Is your pa home from work yet? No, he's gone to the lodge, but George is home. Yeah, so you said. Uh, oh, oh, sure, I'll get out of your way. Uh, Let me show you, Grandfather. Oh, I, I know where George's room is. Well, uh, good night, young fella. Good night. I'm sure you understand. Oh, he's a fine old man, a rugged soul. Yes, of course, but now won't you see if there's something more about me in the crystal? Grandfather, you're a sight for sore eyes. Glad to see you too, Georgie. How's doctrine business coming along? Well, I gave that up a year or so ago. Too many doctors. I took up architecture. There's a lot of money in that. Well, yes and no. I found the field uncomfortably overcrowded, so I tried landscape gardening for a time. You quit that too? Well, had to. Poison ivy from my head to my heels. Well, you'll strike something sometime, I expect. Oh, well, I'm not discouraged. I study, constantly improving my mind. Mm, that ought to help. Got a place for me to sleep tonight? Oh, sure, there's plenty of room. You can sleep in Willie's bed. Oh, that's fine. Georgie, I get a secret. I come this time to stay. Huh? Mm -hmm. Sold out the old place for the taxes, and here I am. So, you know, Grandfather, I think you'd be more comfortable in my bed. I'll sleep downstairs on the couch. Anything's good enough for me.
something's forming. It's you. I see you stepping out of a luxurious automobile. Go on, go on. All I can say is your family will become wealthy through an investment. Oh, but we haven't any money for a real investment. It might be for only a few thousand dollars. Maybe it's oil. I'm sure it'll come out of the ground. Well, that was a nighty. We always have good meetings. I think you'll uh, drop this, Grand Harpoon. Oh, thanks, Wallace. Now, let me see. It seems that I'm forgetting something. Now, what could it be? Was it that business you was going to take up with me? So it was. <laughs> uh, but this is no place to talk business. Uh, and we'd better go over to my hotel. Well, the family will be expecting me home. I, w I wonder if I couldn't drive you out to my house. Perhaps that would be better. Yes, Grandfather, I've devoted my talents to radio. It's the voice of the people, the ears of the nation. It reaches to the farthest corners of the earth. I'm a harp of a thousand strings. 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 Oh, no, no, Miss Mary. You must attune yourself with abandon, like this. I'm a harp of a thousand strings. 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 Great heavens, what new form of idiocy is that? It's that fortune teller fellow your sister Mary's got in the parlor. You know, there are times, Grandfather, when I think this family suffers from a strain of incipient insanity. Well, you ain't got the face to deny it, Georgie. You see, Miss Mary, you're like a beautiful harp, each string of which is in tune with the universe. Oh, Mr. Nottingham is so beautiful. I can almost hear the stillness of the great empty spaces. Come right in, Grand Harpoon. Oh, dear. Father will bring people home with him. Make yourself at home. Not the swellest house in town, but it's all mine. I own it. That's what I've always said, Wallace. It's the home that makes a substantial citizen. Step into the parlor. Sperm oil. Alaska. Alaska. Why, we're all brothers. Father, this is Mr. Nordingham. The exalted blubber of the Detroit Lodge. Pleased to meet you. And this is my daughter Mary, Mr. Whitney. How do you do? How Nordingham, do you? how's it come you haven't been around to the meetings to get acquainted with the boy? I intend to in the very... Do you gentlemen care to talk in private? Not at all necessary. Mr. Nordingham is one of our inner circle. And Mary is one of the family, so you can go right ahead, Grand Harpoon. Well, as I was explaining to you driving out in the car, certain high executives of the whale are floating a stock issue of supernoxial gold. Mm. A new issue, Mr. Whitney? No, Nordingham. There are 500 shares unsubscribed, which we have decided to let go to a select group of large brothers. Well, I'll take them gladly. I'll give you a check now, right just now. Just a minute. You already have your block. All that one member is allowed. Well, I was given to understand there was no more to be had. Uh, really, I... Mr. Nordingham, you surprise me. You're not acting in the proper brotherly spirit of a whale. Are you envious of Brother Wallace here getting his share of this splendid proposition? Well, to put it like that, forgive me, Brother Wallace. Sure. Go ahead, Grand Harpoon. Well, as I was saying, this is the chance of a lifetime. Take these things to the kitchen, Willie. I guess Joe Dogan and your father are in the parlor. All right, Mom. A fortune within reach of your hand. An investment that will repay you a thousandfold. Wealth from the earth. Gold, Brother Wallace. Oh, Mother, I want you to meet the Grand Harpoon of the Whales, Mr. Whitney. Mrs. Wallace, this is an honor and a pleasure. I've been telling your husband. Yes, I heard you. But Ed isn't in the position to buy anything right now. Oh, my dear lady, you misunderstand me. I'm merely offering your husband an opportunity to get in on a sound investment. Because he's a loyal whale and a friend of Brother Dorgan. Well, uh, Brother Dorgan got a friend to let him invest in a gasoline saver just a year ago. And Mother, please. Mr. Whitney is offering Father the chance of a lifetime. Mom! Mom! Grandpa's here. He's out in the kitchen. Oh, you'll have to excuse me, gentlemen. My father's just come from Kansas City. I, I want to see you, Ed. Yes, Mother, in just a minute. 
a very fine woman, Wallace. You'll be guided by your wife, and I can see that you'll never go wrong. Yes, sir. Nothing like knowing what you want to do, Georgie, and then sticking to it. Father! Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Fat and sassy as you were when you was 14. <laughs> How are you? When would you get here? Well, you take those packages off the table. Have you had your dinner? Oh, I paid half a dollar for it in the steam car. Don't you go bother me. I'm making a pot of coffee, Mother. Well, not for me. I ain't been able to stand liquor or coffee since my stomach gave out. Oh, that comes from eating in restaurants. Are you doing anything for it? Oh, we've got a good old-fashioned remedy here. Oh, that's nice. What is it, Grandpa? Oh, something that's good for what ails you. I know a guy that worked on a ship. He said they used to drink shellac. Which ain't bad. Uh, what did you say, Willie? How's business, Father? I, I, I sold out and I'm settling down. Oh, I want to hear all about it. <laughs> I won't urge you, Wallace, but we're closing the deal Monday morning. For $5,000, I'll reserve you 100 shares. $5,000? Now, I don't want to appear selfish, Brother Wallace, but if you feel you can't handle it, I'd be better take it off of your hands and add it to my holdings. I don't want to miss a grand harpoon, but I'd like to talk it over with Mother. If you could give me until about, uh, say, next Wednesday. Wednesday? Well, you see, Mr. Whitney, Father has other interests. Tomorrow is Sunday and the banks are closed. Well, it might be arranged, but mind you, I can't promise. I'm sure you could use your influence, Mr. Whitney. Won't you and Mr. Nordingham have dinner with us on Wednesday evening? I know Father will have arranged with the bank by that time. I find it hard to resist your plea, Miss Wallace. I'll do it. Wednesday night, Wallace. Thank you, Grand Harpoon. Now I must say good night. I'll drive me downtown. Glad to take you, too. Splendid. Do you remember what you saw on the crystal? Wealth to come from the ground. You're absolutely right. I thought it might be oil, but it's gold. I can get 2,000, but I'll have to dig for the other three. Well, it's a nice place you have here, Wallace. You mean uh, raise the money by putting... I the mortgaged air? everything I own. And look at me now. Well, we must be going. Good night, Miss Mary. It's been such a pleasure. Good night. Tell your mother I'll be... Fellow from the lodge sells him something. Mother, father's driving Mr. Whitney and Mr. Nordingham downtown. I've invited them here for dinner on Wednesday evening. I'll help you plan it. You'll help plan it? Ain't you gonna help cook it? Grandfather, we're glad to have you here, but right now we'd like to confer on father's investment. Mary, did your father sign any papers about that gold mine? Coal mine? Mr. Whitney and Mr. Nordingham are big financiers. They're helping Father to make a fortune. Mighty nice of them. Come all the way out to the house to do it, too. No one asked your opinion. Mary. She's right. It's kind of over my head. All I've been doing is puttering around the junk business for the past 20 years. Keep a difference. So I'll leave you to the family conference. Oh, dear. I do hope your father don't sign any papers. Maybe he's got a good thing this time, Mother. You know, Mr. Whitney's an official in the whales, and those lodge people are thicker than thieves. That's what I'm afraid of. Hello, everybody. Hi, sis. Oh. Hello, Edna. Did you have a good time? Oh, swell. Yeah, you and that cream puff ran out on me. You know why, Mom? So they could drive out on the road somewhere and neck. We did not, Ma. Willie's just making that now up. We... Keep quiet, both of you. Willie, you go on to bed. All right. But just you wait. Think I shall retire also. Good, good night. night, all. Good night, George. Oh, Edna. You may keep that little gown you're wearing. I shall be getting plenty more soon. Good night. Good night, Mary. What happened to her? What's the matter, Mom? Nothing, dear. Don't you believe what Willie said? I didn't do anything wrong. Of course you didn't. You know I trust you. Coming to bed? Not yet. I'm waiting for your father. Good night. Good night, baby.
You shouldn't have waited up, Mother. I was worried, Ed. What about? The kids all right? Oh, yes. You didn't sign any papers about that gold mine business, did you? No, no, Mother. But it's a great thing if I could raise the money to get in on it. Don't talk like that. You frighten me. You know all we've saved up is our building and loan shares, and that's only $1,800. That's what's bothering me. I need 5000 Have you gone crazy, Ed? Let me tell you about I it, I don't want to hear about it. I just want you to promise me you won't have anything to do with it. But, Mother... We're not the kind of people to afford such things. We've got the children to think of. Well, Edna haven't finished school yet. George has got to get started, and Mary's going to want a nice wedding someday. But that's what I'm thinking of, Mother. You and the kids. Just what the Lord gave us, and be thankful. You've been the best husband and father any woman ever had. I know you want to do for me and the children. I don't want to hurt you, Ed. But I've got to give these fellas an answer by Wednesday night. Well, tell them we're just plain people. We'll give them a good dinner and just forget all about the gold mine. Here's your dish towel, Molly. Oh. That's the second time I've done that this morning. I guess it must be a sign of something. Sure, it's a sign you get your mind something else. What's worrying you? Well, I suppose I might as well tell you. Ed wants to put all our savings in a gold mine. Better than chasing around with other women. Oh, well, Ed wouldn't do a thing like that. But it'd just worry me sick to lose what we've saved. I guess we all get a hankering to make a lot of money quick and easy. Yes, I guess we do. It'd be so grand for the children. I'd like him to have the best of everything in life. Everything that's fine. On the other hand, Molly, if they had everything they set their minds on, it might ruin them. Not my children. Well, of course, I know they're contrary sometimes. But they're a good, loyal family. Yes, and you're a good, loyal mother. But if you had a lot of money, it might be different. Oh, no, it wouldn't. I guess every mother in the world's like that. She wants to do all she can for her family. That's what worries me so, to think of losing what we've got. Now stop you worrying. I'll drop down to the hotel and see this gold mine fella. Now maybe he's all right. Don't you get mixed up in this, Father. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I know my way around. Now listen to me, Whitney. Let's be satisfied and blow this town now. Don't be silly. The pickings just getting good. Oh, I know their sap's all right. But even the whale's gonna turn. And if they get wise to us, We'll wind up in a striped pajamas. Oh, forget it. Talk with that Wallace baby. He hasn't got a thing. I pumped it daughter she's blue in the face. And 5,000 bucks to them is a federal debt. My dear boy, you don't know human nature. Wallace will come through if he has to rob his grandmother. Grandmother, my eye. His grandpa. And he's no dumbbell. All the better. We'll take grandpa too. <laughs> Well, well, come in, sir. Come in. Howdy. How are you? Meet Mr. Whit Father. My dear sir, have a chair. Thanks. Uh, you the fellow that's talking gold mines to my son-in-law? Well, merely as a representative of the whale. You understand, Mr. Uh, uh, Hopkins. Tom Hopkins. Oh, yes. Mr. Hopkins, you understand this mining proposition is only open to... Oh, no, that's too bad. I was getting sort of interested. Did a little prospect myself in California when I was young, but if it's one of them closed corporations... Well, not uh, entirely. Uh, uh, perhaps we could initiate you into the order. Uh, the whale? Mr. Whitney is the grand harpoon. It might be arranged. Mm, no, no, no. I'll pass. I don't think I could go for one of them hats. <laughs> uh, let me explain this proposition more clearly. Oh, I don't want to bother you. I just got a little money saved up. I uh, sold out my business in Kansas City for something I might turn a penny at. Nordingham. Let's show the gentleman the big map. By all means. The family her. Happy faces on the festive board. Yes, you're a lucky man, Wally. You deserve all the good fortune that's coming to you. A toast to Mr. Wallace. Ed, be careful. You've had three glasses of that wine, and you know what it does to your head. Yeah, I remember last time I was visiting you, I had just got initiated into the kangaroos or something and couldn't go to work for two days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't 
you gentlemen like to go into the drawing room for your cigar? That's a good idea. Then give me a chance to clear off the table, and then you go get the trays in the kitchen. You going up to bed, Father? No, can't sleep much in that room with Willie anyhow. Molly, you ought to do something about that boy's nose. He snores something terrible. Me snore? Gee whiz, he'd keep the night watchman awake. Ma, I'm going out tonight. I'll have a date with Al. Yeah, me too. And tonight, you two don't give me the air. Oh, go chase yourself, Willie. And don't call me Willie. Children, children. <clears throat> well, Brother Wallace, don't you think it advisable to take up our little business matter now? Might just as well. Here is a certified check for $5,000. Took every penny I could scrape up. And you'll never regret it. Fortune is rapping at your door. We're expecting good news from the mine at any time now. Let's get along. Yes, let's get going. <clears throat> I'll be with you in just a minute. I want to see Mother first. Now, where'd I leave my pipe? Uh, oh, Mother. What is it? Here. Put these away and take good care of them. Ed Wallace, you bought that stock. Mother, it's all right. Where'd you get the money? I'll tell you when I get back. Sorry to rush off this way. Thanks for a very lovely dinner. Oh, it's been so nice to have you. Ready, folks? Already. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ed, wait. Now, don't you worry, Mother. Ella Vend, you've spent an evening in cultural society. Father, where did Ed get the money for that stock? Do you know? Mm, that's something you'll have to ask Ed. Oh, why be upset about it, Mother? Mr. Nordingham is in on the mine, so it must be all right. Yes, and both he and Mr. Whitney are whales, Mother. And Father's a whale, too. Who, oh, Ed? <laughs> Give him a pair of striped pants and a cocked hat, and he'll join anything. Grandfather, we'd appreciate it if you'd resist making senile observations. Senile? What's that? Childish, Grandfather. Uh, childish? Well, I ain't so childish I go flitting around like a ninny, pretending to be a heart. Must I be insulted in my own home? Your home, it's her home. I gave it to her when she was married. I am going to my room. Mary, you beg your grandfather's pardon right away. Never. Scared. Oh, now, grandfather, he... And I go for you, too. Doing nothing but going around all day telling yourself bedtime stories instead of working to support yourself? Well, grandfather... Come on, get out of here before I lose my temper and you hear some real broadcasting. Oh, father, they didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I know they didn't. Yeah. Don't mind me. That was just a little play acting. <laughs> Seems like it's about time for someone to distribute a little horse sense around here, the way things are going on. What with grand harpoons and gold mines. Oh, I wish I knew where Ed got the money to buy that stock. Now, you stop worrying and get your dishes done. That'll give me something to think about till he gets home. Sit down, I want to talk to you. Where'd you get the money to buy that stock? I, uh... Well, Mother, I mortgaged the house. Now that's a story. You couldn't have done that unless I signed the papers. I, uh, I had your power of attorney. Remember the time you were laid up? Shucks, Mother, don't feel that way about it. We'll have plenty of money from now on. I don't want to hear any more about it. But this gold mine is going to be a big thing. I just want you to leave me alone. Psst. Gee, Grandpa, I'm glad you're here. I wish you'd go in the parlor and speak to Molly. She's all upset. Oh, probably something she ate for dinner. No, no. No, that... Uh, well, I just told her that I mortgaged the house for that gold mine stock. You mo... Oh. Well, maybe I better have a talk with her before she thinks it over and decides to scalp you. 
Leave it to me. Well, Ed told me. Now, quit acting like a baby. Why, if your ma had a tantrum every time I mortgaged the house, she'd have gone daft. Owning our own home gave me such a feeling of security. Something to cling to. Well, anyway, Molly, you've got the children, paid bitching and help if you've got in a tight place. Yes, I suppose George could go to work and Mary could teach piano. Yeah, and that Nottingham fella ain't bad in the heart. Every young girl gets a fool idea once in a while. They're all good children, Molly. If they weren't, they wouldn't be yours. Mine and Ed's. Well, I guess it's all my fault. I didn't have no business letting you marry a father. There isn't a better husband or father in the world than Ed Wallace. Then go and tell him so. Why, the poor fellow's probably kicking his pants all around the room by this time. Uh, uh. Father, you're an old fraud. Now you know how I hate a woman a lolly gagging over me. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes? Granville? This is me. What? You don't mean it. Gosh! I said gosh! Mother! Grandfather! Every... What is it, Ed? What's the matter? Wait till the others get here. Children, come downstairs! Everybody! I wonder what it is. What does he want? It's Mary, the house on fire? What's yelling about? Well, let's find out. Listen, folks, we're rich. We're rich. Are you sure you're not having a nervous breakdown? The Grand Harpoon just got a wire from the mine. They struck the lost one-eyed skunk load. There's a check for $10,000 waiting for me. And plenty more coming. Oh, I knew it. The Crystal Heads, so we'll move out of this house oh, in the morning. Oh, well, I want a lot of new dresses. I'm going to enter a boys' oh, school at once. Oh, oh. I'm going to get a swell new car. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> if you will allow me, madam. Do the, do the children know that breakfast is ready, Perkins? The family have been informed that breakfast is served, madam. Well, I wonder what's keeping them then. I'm under the impression they did not relish being disturbed. In fact, Master William requested me to go soak my head. Oh, I hope you don't mind me saying a thing like that, Perkins. He's always been so full of life, ever since he was a little boy. <laughs> I dare say, madam. Yes. At the door, madam, with your permission. One of my way, Perkins, I'm in a hurry. Mom, I just got to have a new evening dress. I've been out not everything I have every place in town. I can't have Mr. Crothers thinking I'm some poor little Cinderella without clothes to cover my lily white body now, can I? Don't talk like that, dear. Sit down and have your breakfast. I can't eat breakfast, Ma. Just orange juice. Gotta keep slim and boyish, you know. That's the way Jerry likes them. What kind of new nonsense is this? It isn't nonsense, Mom. It's Jerry Crothers. I told you about him. Oh, Mom, he's wonderful, he's glorious, he's grand, he's marvelous, so all the girls are wild about him, but I got him. Edna, is that the one you've been staying out so late at night with? Uh-huh. Now, that's not the kind of person for you to be around with. He's worldly and worthless. And interesting, Mom. Flowers for Miss Edna. Oh! They're from Jerry. I must phone him right away. Have them put in water. Uh, yes, ma'am. Perkins, will you see what's keeping the other children? Very well, madam. I really value your opinion very much, Perkins, because you have such perfect diction. Now listen to this. <clears throat> And so, little kiddies of Radio Land, we come to the close of tonight's adventures with Brother Rabbit, the Little Chipmunk, and Goldilocks. Remember, we will be with you again tomorrow night at the same time. And now, listen to Brother Rabbit. Good night, little kiddies. How was that, Perkins? Uh, quite satisfactory, sir. But of course, 
I do not consider myself an authority on rabbits. Ah, oh, Perkins, there you are, my man. Yes, my lady. Uh, Attendez-vous que Charles, les automobiles et les ventes d'élimination en 11 heures. Very good, my lady. Uh, the motor at 11. And when Mr. Nottingham calls, show him into the salon de... Um... Oh, the La Salle à Manger, my lady. <laughs> Thank you, Perkins. You are very kind. Thank you, my lady. Hey, Perky. Let me have 40 bucks, will you? Master William, I, I... I know that makes 280, but you'll get it back. This is most irregular, sir. Yes, and so are some of those grub bills you slip over on Pop. But I don't peep, do I? Mr. William, really, I must remonstrate. See in the funny papers. Here you are. See, I wasn't trying to hold out on you. Why, I'd give you the moon if you asked for it. Now you can buy that little hat or whatever it was you wanted. Oh, oh, Cherie. Oh, my cute little kitten. My really. Oh, now, don't call me Willie, please. No, it's your Billy, n'est-ce pas, Billy? Oui, oui, Cherry. <laughs> and next week you will buy me the fur coat, huh? Oh, gee, Celeste, I don't know. Oh, you do not love me? Oh, well, don't cry. I'll fix it up somehow. My Billy! Willie! Very idea. I never thought that a brother of mine would... Say, what is this? Can a fellow have any privacy? Willie, Mother wishes to speak to you in the dining room. Well, all right. But don't you start anything. You are dismissed this instant. Oh, so? I don't wish to hear anything from you. I am content. But perhaps your papa would like to know what happened with you and Monsieur Nottingham. And that you have packed everything to go away tonight, huh? Shh! Of course, Celeste, I was hasty. We'll forget it. Oh, and I'm through with that little blue chiffon tea gown. Perhaps you might like it. Merci, mademoiselle. My 40 bucks. Come on. For if I give you the gate, you start walking. Big-hearted Harry. It's just against your principles to see anyone else cut in around here, isn't it? Oh, save the chatter. Come on. Okay. No need for you and me to fight about it. There's plenty for both of us in this family of fools. Well, I'm sure you could give up one night. I've tried not to interfere with your pleasures, but it's your grandfather's birthday, and I'd like to have you here. Mother, I don't wish to seem inconsiderate, but I'm sponsoring a radio revel tonight. I'm to be introduced over the air. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm warning you, stay away from your radios tonight. That is all. Ma, I just can't give up my day tonight. And I have planned to leave for a weekend in Canada. I've already made reservations. Well. Couldn't you just be home for dinner? Mother dear, isn't it just a bit absurd? Really, I can't see where Grandfather fits in. Wouldn't it be more charitable if he were provided for in one of those nice, comfortable places for elderly people? You mean, put Grandpa in an old folks' home? Well, we could give him a generous allowance. Don't let me ever hear one of you suggest such a thing as that again. Don't you realize you're talking about my father? Well, we're certainly reminded of it often enough. Doesn't it mean anything to you that when people get old, it's their children's duty to be kind to them? Pardon me. Mr. Wallace is office on the telephone. I'll take it. Well, Mom, I'll stick around long enough to wish the old boy a couple of more happy birthdays. I suppose I can be here for a little while, too, Mom. I'll have some ham and eggs, Perkins. Emphasis on the ham. Yes, Daddykins. No, I hadn't planned on being here for dinner, but 
if Mr. Nordingham and Mr. Whitney will be here? Of course I will. I'll arrange everything. What? Mother? Yes, I ain't scarcely seen your ma for the past few days with being so busy and everything. Tell her I was asking for her. Yes. Goodbye. That's enough. I guess a few hand nades won't worry me none with the splitting headache I've got. Here, keep the chain. <laughs> yes, you're right, Wallace. It's at a time like this that I realize what an old bachelor like me has missed. A toast to Mr. Hopkins. May he live to enjoy more birthdays with continued health and prosperity. Here, here. To the champ. Here's to you, Grandpa. Down the hatch, fellas. I can't go with the stuff myself. Uh, I'll have a little snore to my tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, we better get to the lodge. Yes, you're addressing the city boomers who are guests of the lodge tonight, Wallace. I'll have Perkins get the coach, Mr. Nordingham. Oh, I'm sorry you can't come along, Mother, and hear my speech. Oh, I don't mind, Dad. Just you do the best you can, and I'll be sitting here thinking about you. Better get your uniform on. I've got to get going. i got something special on. So have I, Mom. Mr. Carruthers, call for Miss Edna. Oh, I'll be right there for Edna. I want you to promise me you'll be home early. Well, I'll get home when I can, but I won't promise when. Unless you promise, I'm going to have to forbid you seeing Mr. Carruthers. Oh, all right. I'll have the car and the luggage opposite the lodge hall at 11. The license and everything is arranged. Listen, Sap, I told you to lay off of that dame. You play your chips and I'll play mine, Whitney. I'm cementing myself in solid on this bankroll. Oh, mother! Coming in! <clears throat> Don't wait up for me tonight. I may be late. Well, not too late, I hope. Remember, an hour's sleep before midnight is... is worth five with your head on a desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do hope you'll all come again soon. It's so nice to have family all together when we have company. Yes, indeed. Good night, Mrs. Wallace. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Wallace. Good night. Good night, Mom. Good night. What you mooning about, daughter? Because the kids are all out again tonight? Mm-hmm. Seems like giving them everything you wanted them to have ain't left much for you. Well, if they're contented, I'm happy. Happy? I'm wasting money as fast as they can get their hands on it. Automobiles, clothes, George telling himself bedtime stories instead of getting himself a job. They're having things they want, father. When they were little, I tried to make them happy by taking care of them. Now they're grown, they're finding their own happiness. That's all you can ask. Rats. You're sitting here worrying your soul out what they're going to get into next. They're rushing toward destruction as sure as you're alive. Molly, you mark my words. There's red lights ahead and they better heed the warning. Listen, Mac, you'll remember her. She was here with me the other night, a little French girl. Certainly, sir. And I have your same table for you. In the corner. Oh, swell. She may be a little late, but she'll get her all right and let me know when she arrives. I'll be inside. Yes, sir. Mm. Here's to the dog to bit us. I don't want him to bite too hard. <laughs> don't be silly. This will make the pup more frisky. Besides, even he's young. Let's go to the Red Widow and dance. We can have a private dining room and our own radio. What are you doing here? Willie, you little snooper. Why are you chasing after me? I'm not chasing you. Then what are you doing here? I haven't been introduced. Oh, this is my brother, Willie. Willie, this is Mr. I know him, and all about him. Well, that makes it one happy little family, doesn't it, Mrs. Down? You bet I will. And I'm not leaving here till Edna goes home with me. Willie Wallace, if you humiliate me, I'll... I think that arrangement will just be fine. And she's not gonna lap up any more of this booze, either. Again, I agree with you. Oh, Mac. Yes, sir. Take Mr. Wallace's order. Yes, sir. Oh, the young lady is here. Shall I show her to this table? Oh, so that's it. Oh, you shut up. This is private. And anyway, I'm a man. That makes it different. I'll go out and see her. And don't you try and run out on me. Now's our chance. How about it? The Red Widow. I'll show them they can't spoil my life. Good. We'll go out the side door so we can't see us. Listen, can't you make us some other night? Honest, I ran into something here. 
You tried to fool me. You have some other girl. Oh, uh, no, I have a celebrity. All right. It is goodbye. I will never see you again. Oh, all right, then. Come on. Charles, what time is it? 20 minutes of 11, miss. Well, he should be here any moment. Keep watching the entrance of the lodge hall. Yes, miss. Are you the official doorman? Yeah. Brother Whale, at Grand National Hawk Room of the Lodge, may I say that I've spent a very pleasant evening with you. Who was that person who just spoke? That's the man you just said you were, the Grand Harpoon Door. No, you can't go in there. Get out of my no, way. No, you, you can't, can't go in. What is the meaning of this doorman? Who is this intruder? He says he's you. I am you. What? I mean, I'm Franklin Q. Whitney. Why, this man must be a lunatic. Doorman, call the police. It won't be necessary. I brought them with me. What? I told you so. Don't let him get away. Don't oh, You got lots of time. There must be some mistake. Sure there is. Mr. Whitney is a big business and mining man. Well, he's made me a fortune. He's, uh... I'll tell you who he is. He's a crook who impersonates lodge officials. In that way, he gains the confidence of members and sells them worthless stock. And this is Fraternity Freddy, his accomplice. But my gold mine stock is worth millions. It's... You're a poor, deluded chump. This man has never been connected with a gold mine. Well, where did all my money come from? I'll tell you, Mr. Wallace. Keep your mouth shut or we'll never get out of this jam. Take these fellas away, officers. Never so humiliated in all my life. What does it mean, Father? Why did the police take Mr. Nordingham and Mr. Whitney away from the lodge? The Grand Harpoon and the other fellow are in jail, Mary. There are a couple of croaks. Mr. Nordingham? Uh... Oh, I don't believe it. It's the truth, Mary. I thought we were on easy street for life. But it seems it was just a swindle. We ain't got nothing. Yes, but things just don't happen like this, Father. There was so much money coming in. Yeah, and so much going out. Your dad burned up about a hundred thousand dollars in you kids. And what you got for it? Grandfather, this is none of your concern. Ain't it? Oh, please. Don't let's say anything unkind. It's over. Let's just make the best of it. At least we've got the old house left. That's just what worries me. I never paid up the mortgage. And the interest money's overdue. Well, haven't we enough left to pay that? Can't we sell something? No. All this fouled it down, Swank was hired to put on a show. You don't own five cents for the nothing. But if there never was a gold mine, where did all the money come from? I'll tell you. The junk business. You don't have to look at me like that. When I first came here, I intended to surprise you by telling you I had a lot of money. But when I saw you acting like a pack of lunatics, I figured it'd be a crime to encourage you in your nonsense. Father. Let me speak my mind, Molly, because it was you that put the idea in my head. I thought maybe if you could give the children everything they wanted, it might make you happier. But when Ed was going to make a monkey out of himself with that harpoon fella, I stepped in and took a hand. I fixed it with them slickers to keep the money, coming in as fast as you could spend it. Because I wanted to find out if one of you was worth your salt. Well, you showed me. Traipsing around, having your own good times. And not one of you thinking of your ma. Well, it's all over now, and... If one of you's got a grain more sense, it was worth it. If I'd known it was your money, I'd, I'd never touch a penny of it. Mary, don't speak to your grandfather like that. Well, it's true. If I had known, I'd, I'd have starved. I'd, I'd have scrubbed floors. That would have been a good idea. Your ma did it, but you ain't got the gumption. I'll answer it. Hello. Yes. Yes, this is Mrs. Wallace. Yes, Edna Wallace is my daughter. Mr. Carruthers' car was wrecked. My daughter's purse was found in the car. Tell me, was my baby hurt? Tell me. Oh. Mother, what happened? Hello? Hello? What's the matter, Molly? It was the state police. Mr. Carruthers' car ran into the bridge about an hour ago. 
They think that he and Edna are both drunk. Edna? Oh, Mother, no. George, get your dad's car ready. Yes, right away. Our little girl. It was my fault. I should have been looking after my children. No, it was my fault, Ed. I shouldn't have been interfering oh, in things. please don't talk. Let's do something. Ed, take me there. Ed! Hey, look! Mom, look! Baby. Oh, I'm so <laughs> thankful! Daddy! Edna. <laughs> Willie, what happened? Well, I met Ed and this guy Carruthers at a nightclub and tried to take Edna home with me, but they gave me the slip. Then our car hit a bridge, but luckily we weren't hurt. Then I got Edna away before the police arrived. Well, where's Carruthers? Oh, well, he's at the hospital. The wreck didn't put him there, but I did. Well, uh, I guess you all got a lot to say to each other. I'll take a walk. What's he talking about? Father's lost all his money. Now, don't you kids worry about that. We'll get along somehow. Maybe Joe Duggan can get me my position back in the printing plant. Well, he'd better. You've always been a pretty good friend to him. I'll phone him. I'm going to make us some coffee. We need it. Oh. <laughs> well, looks like this family goes back to hash on Mondays. Mm. Say, so something must be done about this situation, fellas. Grandfather seems to be under the impression that we're nothing but a bunch of useless wasters. Oh, now that's funny. How could he have gotten that idea? Say, that old bird doesn't miss much. We must rise above our difficulties. Say, there's a lot of money to be made in radio, and I've had excellent training. And I have musical talent, and I can go on the stage. Look at all the money there is in that. Yeah, but think of all the money we ain't got. Listen, kiddies, we're only playing hooky. I'm gonna get a real job. Honest? Well, I don't know how honest it'll be, but it'll help pay for groceries. Alas, how true. Ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience, this is the voice of experience speaking. The only way to lick a depression is to go to work. <laughs> Where the heck is that station? Try around 120, Grandpa. It's station DYX, Father. Mother, I gotta hurry for the lodge. Darn thing sounds like it had the pip. Let me try, Grandpa. What lodge is it tonight, Dad? The Royal Order of Bees. I'm only a drone as yet, but I'll be a worker bee pretty soon. Well, <clears throat> be careful, Ed. Don't let the bees sting you. Remember the whale's harpoon you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Mom, here's the week in slave ways. Plus to that on the mortgage. And here's mine, Mom. Did we miss the broadcast? Here it is now. Be quiet, everybody. Uh -oh. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet. When you hear the signal, it will be exactly 29 and three-quarter minutes after six o'clock. <laughs> Boy, wasn't he swell? George has a fine voice. Oh, he's great. Is that all he's gonna say? Well, that's all for another half hour. My gosh, I always knew that boy would find the right job. He's turned himself into a radio cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Mother. Don't wait up for me. Well, I'm gonna take a bath. Well, let me take mine first, Willie. I got a date with Al Phillips. Don't call me Willie. Oh. Are you going out tonight, Mary? Yes, Mother. Willie's taking me to a movie, but he doesn't know it yet. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks to the children, the interest will be paid for the next three months. No, you don't have to worry no more about the interest, Molly. Here's the receipt for the mortgage. Why, where did you get this? Oh, I bought it from the bank. I'll tell you a little secret, Molly. That money that I let the kids and Ed blow in was just a drop in the bucket. What? Sure, uh, I get a couple of more hundred thousand left. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I wanted to be sure that all learned the lesson of red lights ahead. I knew the money go to them after I was gone, and if they went on throwing good money away, I'd be turning over in my grave. Father, you're just wonderful. Oh, no, I ain't. Oh, I'm smart. Now, now, this whole business gets you all upset. Here, here. That little nip of good old Indian Joe's nerve on it. It'll pack you right up. Ain't bad. 